So everybody I know is like arguing about R. Kelly, and I was thinking like, what did he do? What kind of great scandal is R. Kelly involved in? Did he come out as a conservative or a Trump supporter? No, actually, this is about the same thing that everybody already knows and that everyone has already known for about 20 years now. So he likes girls that are a little bit too young. This is not a video about me defending R. Kelly. We're going to take a deep dive into this situation and some of the context and some of the results of this situation. So we got this video from The Root. Meet some of the women speaking out against R. Kelly. What drove me to want to keep sharing my story was the fact that my silence made him more arrogant. We were all kind of afraid to come forward and talk about our stories. He knew that, so it kind of made his ego a little bigger to keep it going and going and going and going. They pretty much all knew what was going on. And I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I'm not a sexist. I'm not one of these guys that think women have absolutely no agency. But the question is, how responsible are they in this situation? I have no doubt that R. Kelly is an extreme monster and a predator, but to say that these women were completely tricked, well, let's just keep watching. That's the reason he's gotten away with it, because we were all afraid. At some point, they wanted him to get away with it. They were complicit. Believe I can fly. Never really liked that song. My name is Geronda Pace, and I was in a relationship with R. Kelly when I was 16 years old. Listen to the language that she uses here. She was in a relationship with R. Kelly. It's an interesting choice of words. She was, she was just in a relationship. I am Drea Kelly. I'm actually R. Kelly's ex-wife. My full name is Kitty Jones. I am an ex-girlfriend of Robert Kelly. My name is Angelo Clary. I'm the father of Azriel Clary. My daughter's currently still with R. Kelly. Still with R. Kelly. She's with him. She wants to be there. She wants to be with R. Kelly. If this guy is such a monster and such an evil demon, why do these women want to be with him? Why do they want to be his girlfriend? Why do they want to be his wife? It's like, dude, you're not the victim here. You're the father. You don't have to let your daughter become one of R. Kelly's prostitutes. How much did they pay you to do this interview? Unbelievable. Robert was controlling from what I would wear, when you would wear it, who could speak to me, like walking into the studio, literally the engineers had to look at their feet. If a man told you what to wear and said, nobody's allowed to look at you when I'm in the room, would you choose that guy to be your husband? Would you even go on a date with a guy like that? Would you even give your phone number to a guy like that? Most women are not gonna put up with this nonsense. And defending a woman who marries a pedophile and knows he's a pedophile is almost as crazy as defending the pedophile himself. He would let them know, don't look at my wife, don't look her in her face, there's no reason for you. Look, he wouldn't let me speak to them. You shouldn't wear that. Um, did anyone talk to you on the way here? Don't look guys in the eye. Don't speak to them. Look down. Turn your face against the wall. That was the first time that I really thought that man was going to kill me, and it was in the backseat of a Hummer. So it would be a thing sometimes when Hummers would come by, I would shake, I would get nervous, I couldn't breathe, because I thought, this Hummer is going to eventually be my casket. Like, he's going to kill me in the back of this Hummer. Again, notice the language. That was the first time she thought that this man was going to kill her several times. How many times does a man have to abuse you to the point where you think you're going to be killed before you divorce him, before you speak up? You don't think that it's just a little bit suspicious that all of these women had the same experience but still refused to leave the man, refused to say anything bad about the man? Arguments was something that was a bit alarming. If I didn't want to do something, he would get extremely upset and it would he'd become heated. Then over time, it progressed to, okay, now I'm not going to yell at her anymore. I'm going to slap her. So he would just slap me and that was too, <sighs> I can't talk about it. It's just too hard. You gotta have some empathy. You gotta have some sympathy for these women. I can't imagine going through a situation like this. But a man that's being physically and verbally abusive to any woman, let alone 
14, 15, 16 year old women should not be the type of dude that you're seeking out to become your partner. There is some kind of aspect to these relationships that we are just not seeing, that we're just not being told about here. People think when you come forward, that's it. You're still dealing with living it. Every time you're describing incidents that happen, you're picturing yourself getting hit. You can feel that. You can smell his hand. You can remember the cologne that he was wearing that day. It's frightening. From me sitting and spending time with all the victims, I can assume what's happening because their stories tell me what my daughter's going through. Yeah, exactly. There's some kind of cognitive dissonance going on here. He's sitting here doing an interview with The Root and doing documentaries on Lifetime, getting that money, getting that screen time, getting that five minutes of fame. This guy's daughter is getting urinated on as we speak. Does he seem enraged by this at all? He actually sounds like he's bragging. Look how cool I am because my daughter dates R. Kelly. Dude, you need to find your daughter and end this interview right now. Because she wouldn't be exception to the rule and I can only pray that she's not having to go through half of the things that I've already heard. Nobody should have to go through any of these things. And you're sitting here doing interviews and praying about it? Give me a break. Have a man to take your 17 year old child, stripper, from that young adulthood to not spend 18 home, 19 home, 20, and now we going on 21. So she's been with R. Kelly since she was 17, which is illegal, by the way. A year goes by, another year goes by, another year goes by, and then yet another year goes by. She turns 18, she's an adult. She makes all her own decisions. If she wants to be R. Kelly's toilet, that's her choice, and she's making that choice. I'm sure there are plenty of women who would love to be R. Kelly's personal porta potty. If I go on Facebook and I see all this virtue signaling, when for 20 years, dozens of women voluntarily wanted to be with this man, put up with the abuse from this man, did nothing about it, said nothing about it, nobody cared. They still listened to his music. Even the boondocks made fun of this. Dave Chappelle made fun of this. This guy's reputation has been out in the open. It has been spoofed. It has been satirized. And this dude thinks that his daughter is an exception to the rule. She's the real girlfriend. She's not gonna get abused. When you finally find your daughter, you're gonna have to make her take like seven or eight showers in a row. With our family? I believe he haven't faced any consequences because all of his victims are women of color. Notice the language. His victims are women of color. But, but no, you're not a victim. You're his ex-girlfriend or his ex-lover or his ex-wife. And we are always pushed to the back. You know, we're always put on the back burner. And this is something that we normally don't talk about within a black community. It's a protective thing. We're talking about a pedophile. We're talking about a manipulative celebrity who used his status to prey on women. The degree of pigment in their skin has nothing to do with anything. You know, I think overall for black women to be protective over black men, but who's protecting us? Why would you protect a black man who is a predator, who is a criminal? And that is exactly what everybody has been doing for 20 years now and counting. I don't even care about an apology at this point. I just, you know, turn your life over and get some help. You don't want him to apologize. You want to embarrass him. You want to make a complete fool out of him and elevate yourself because it's the perfect time to do it. And they should. They should want to do interviews. They should want to be paid to talk about their experiences. Not defending R. Kelly not blaming these women. We're gonna get a very narrow sliver of the truth. We're gonna get a very particular type of spin that is intended to have a very particular effect on all the people watching this. Does anybody actually have to be accountable and suffer a consequence? We'll just take our check and be on our way. Admit that you've done these things and stop making us out to be, 
you know, groupies and gold diggers just to mask what you've done. All right, so she wants him to admit that he did these things. Well, guess what? You got your wish, because R. Kelly has literally been admitting all of this stuff for decades now. All you have to do is look at his album titles, look at his song lyrics. There is absolutely no doubt that this dude is into young girls under the age of 18. I hope that people look at this documentary and know this isn't the R. Kelly witch hunt. This isn't about going out and attacking him. This is about supporting these women. Within that man, there is a monster. And you're so caught up in that celebrity that you're not realizing lives are in. I'm not defending R. Kelly. I don't care about R. Kelly. And I think he's a criminal. But why is that so controversial to say? Why can't you say it? You're sitting here saying that you want to stand up for women. But here we are taking all of the agency away from all of these women. None of them, not a single one of them, made a single decision on their own merit. None of them had any free will at all whatsoever. If you want to really support women, treat them equally. Treat them with the same respect. Treat them with the same level of critique. I'm holding all of these women to the same standard that they're holding R. Kelly. And I fully support all of these women and all of the other women in the world for that matter. The way they're telling this story, the way they're framing the situation is not how it happens in reality. What exactly did R. Kelly do that convinced you that he was a good partner? What did he say? What did he actually do in reality? Where did this monster manipulation actually occur but instead they're gonna put R. Kelly up on this pedestal and use him as an example to tarnish all men as if R. Kelly this ridiculous bracelet wearing pedophile is somehow representative of the majority of men and women are gonna go around thinking that if they delete R. Kelly's music on their Spotify playlist that all of a sudden they're making some great progress the actual progress is never going to occur. Let's finish this up already. Jeopardy. At the end of the day, this guy that makes this great music is abusing women. You gotta separate the art from the artist. And I don't have an opinion on his music, but you don't think it kind of cheapens your message just a little bit to say that? So that's it, that's the video by The Root. And uh, one last thing here I wanted to take a look at is a couple of these articles that I found. Check this out. January 4th, 2019, R. Kelly's music sees spike in sales after docuseries premiere. Yes, that's right, spike in sales. R. Kelly's music is in demand following the premiere of Lifetime Network's much-hyped docuseries Surviving R. Kelly. Okay. It says, sales of his music went through the roof on Friday. The docuseries resulted in the Pied Piper gaining new fans. Many of them downloaded his tunes after hearing the terrifying allegations. Streams increased 16%. Are we going to see a spike in R. Kelly's music sales after each part of this six-part docuseries airs? This dude is not going away. He's still in his prime. He's only 51. All of you guys talking about R. Kelly right now are helping him. You're giving him free advertising. You're giving him new fans. You're literally putting money in the guy's pocket. Don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying the guy should be doxxed. I'm not saying his career should end. If this guy is guilty, then it should be easy to prove him guilty in a court of law. We have just another case of virtue signaling, no action being taken, and the guy continues to make tons of money. All right, here's the last thing I want to talk about. This is the big, big, big picture here. Who is buying this guy's music? We just talked about how his record sales have spiked. Let's just see who's responsible for that. This is about the gender split between people who buy music. For example, of the people online globally, only 40% of them are women. Yet, these women spend on average two hours more online per month than their male counterparts. Women spend more time on social networks, more likely to email, and also spend more time and money at online retailers. But do they truly buy more music? That is the question. Here's the answer. Over two-thirds of top single download purchases were of artists with a female majority fan base. 
80%. That's almost all of them. Almost all of the top album purchases had a female majority fan base. Okay, so that's not slightly in favor of songs geared towards females. This is heavily in favor. Hmm, I wonder if R. Kelly appeals to mostly men or mostly women. Am I an R. Kelly fan? No. I mean, the guy is an R&B singer. He's a smooth R&B, like Isley Brothers, like Charlie Wilson. It is basically women music. To wrap this whole thing up, like, this is a very complex story with a lot of different contexts that you could look at it. It comes down to one thing. Women love R. Kelly. Watch any single one of his music videos. You will see an entire three, four, five minute video of women fawning over and adoring R. Kelly. Women going out of their way to degrade themselves, to embarrass themselves, to please R. Kelly. So if you're gonna sit here and tell me that R. Kelly is 100% responsible and the women are 0% responsible for this situation, that is just as crazy as somebody saying, well, the women are actually 100% responsible and R. Kelly is 0% responsible. We should be able to look at this situation rationally and use it as a jumping off point to talk about bigger issues, such as millions and millions and millions of women seeing a documentary about R. Kelly being a pedophile and then proceeding to go online and buy his album the very next minute. The only predatory behavior going on here is on the part of the Lifetime Movie Network and these record companies who may even be creating this whole scandal as a publicity stunt. Everybody's buying into it. It doesn't matter whether you're on R. Kelly's side or not. You're still putting money in the guy's pocket. But what do you guys think? Let me know. Are you a fan of R. Kelly? Do you hate his guts? Leave me a comment down below. But look, I feel like most of us are gonna be level-headed in this situation. Take the bad with the good and approach it with a rational perspective. And that, my friend, is how you get the money.